today's lesson, we'll be focusing on equivalent ratios. So we'll be writing equivalent ratios, writing ratios in simplest form, and then comparing ratios. And our standard is 6 RP 3A. So if Linus has eight red marbles and 12 blue marbles, you could write the ratio of red to blue marbles as eight to 12. But if you decided to look at the marbles in pairs, you could write a ratio that there are four pairs of red marbles to six pairs of blue marbles. And if you notice, the actual number of marbles does not change. Or you decide to look at the marbles in groups of four. So now you would have two groups of four red marbles and three groups of three blue marbles. So your ratio would be two to three. But once again, the actual number of marbles did not change. So therefore, eight to 12, four to six, and two to three are known as equivalent ratios. They are ratios that tell you the same pieces of information. You're just looking at it slightly different. So here, if we have pencils and erasers, and we want to write three ratios for the number of pencils to the number of erasers. Well, the first ratio we could write is based on the exact number of pencils and the exact number of ratios. So we could have a ratio of 10 to 20. Maybe we look at them in pairs, and we notice that we have five pairs of pencils and 10 pairs of erasers. So we could um, write that ratio as 5 to 10. Or maybe we look at them in groups of 5. Well, if we looked at them in groups of 5, we would have two groups of 5 pencils compared to four groups of 5 erasers. Or maybe we look at them as groups of 10. In that situation, we would have one group of 10 to 2 groups of 10. So 10 to 20, 5 to 10, 2 to 4, and 1 to 2 would all be equivalent ratios because they're still uh, telling you the same thing about the pencils and the erasers. <coughs> Excuse me. So when writing a ratio in simplest form, you look at the two terms and you try to divide them by the greatest common factor. So the ratio 50 to 20, we'll notice that both of them end in zero, which means we could divide them by 10 to get the ratio five to two. For part B, when we have eight centimeters to three meters, we first have to put them in the same unit. So we go back to some of the information we previously learned, and we know that one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. And so we have three meters, so that would equal 300 centimeters. So we would have the ratio of 8 to 300, and we can divide those both by 4 to get the ratio of 2 to 75. Excuse me. So 12 to 64, we can divide both of those by 4, and we'd get the ratio of 3 to 16. And 7 kilograms to 21 grams, we know that 1 kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams. So 7 kilograms would be equal to 7,000 grams which would give us a ratio of 7,000 to 21. And we can divide both of those by seven to get a ratio of 1,000 to three. Equivalent ratios have the same ratio in simplest form. So you can see here P to Q is a ratio of one to two, which is simplest form. 
R to S has a ratio of two to four, but since you can divide both two and four by two, uh, you would get that down to one to two. So one to two and two to four are equivalent ratios because they can both be expressed as one to two. Excuse me. So are the ratios three to four and six to nine equivalent? Well, three to four would simplify down to three to four. Six to nine, we can divide both of those by three to get that down to two to three. Three to four and two to three are not equivalent, or are not the same, so they're not equivalent. And another way you could look at these, three times two is six, Four times two is not nine, so they would not be equivalent. I'm going to scroll this down just a little bit. So we want, are the ratios one to four and 12 to three equivalent? Well, one to four simplifies down to one to four. 12 to three, we divide both those by three, we get four to one. But if we look at our math note over on the right, it says the order of the terms in a ratio is important. So two to five is not the same as five to two. So if two to five is not the same as five to two, one to four is not the same as four to one. So those are not equivalent. <coughs> Excuse me again. So seven to eight and eight to seven, we're determining if they are equivalent. And just like we said in the previous example, order matters, so those are not equivalent. 5 to 9 and 15 to 27, well, 5 to 9 is fully simplified. You can divide both 15 and 27 by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. 27 divided by 3 is 9. So, yes, they are equivalent. 12 to 13 and 24 to 39, well, 12 to 13 is in lowest terms. 24 to 39, we can divide both of those by 3. That would give us 8 to 13, and that is no. Or another way with this one, 12 times 2 is 24, but 13 times 2 is 26, which is not 39. Or 13 times 3 is 39, but 12 times 3 is not 24. So those are not equivalent. 4 to 24, you can divide both those by 4. That takes you down to 1 to 6. 8 to 48, you can divide both those by 8 to get 1 to 6, so yes, they are. Or 4 times 2 is 8, and 24 times 2 is 48, so yes, they would be equivalent. Martha's baking some loaves of bread. The recipe for one loaf of bread uses 3 tablespoons of sunflower seeds and 4 tablespoons of cranberries. So if Martha plans to make more loaves of bread, she can find equivalent ratio of the number of tablespoons of sunflower seeds to the number of tablespoons of cranberries by multiplying both terms of the ratio by the same number. So if Martha decides to bake five loaves, <coughs> excuse me, she would use 15 tablespoons of sunflower seeds and 20 tablespoons of cranberries. That's 5 times 3 is 15, 5 times 4 is 20. If Martha decides to make 8 loaves of bread, she would need 24 tablespoons of sunflower seeds and 32 tablespoons of cranberries. And if she decided to make a baker's dozen of 13 loaves, she would need 39 tablespoons of sunflower seeds, and she would need 52 tablespoons of cranberries. So when finding equivalent fractions, sometimes you just have to pick. <coughs> Excuse me, I was trying to hold that off there. Uh, you just pick a number and multiply both terms of the ratio by that number. So if you wanted to double it, you'd multiply both by 2, triple it times 3, times 4, or times 5. So if we wanted to find three ratios equivalent to 7 to 8, 
you would simply just pick a number and multiply both terms by that number. So you could multiply them both by 2, and that would give you 14 to 16. You could multiply them both by 3 and get 21 to 24. You could multiply them both by 4 to get 28 to 32, or by 5 to get 35 to 40. You could multiply them by 10 to get 70 to 80. However, if the only thing you're going to do is put zeros on the end, there would be some um, penalties for just making it 70 to 80, 700 to 800, and 7,000 to 1,000 as I addressed in class the other day. You can multiply them both by 11 to get 77 to 88. Or whatever number you choose, you would multiply them both by that number. And that is today's lesson. As always, I hope this helps.